Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Garage. Today's video is part five in the Mobile Mustang frame jig. Hopefully you've seen the other videos so you know what I'm doing, but for those of you that haven't, I'm using that 68 Mustang that I picked up a couple months ago. It is a very straight and very solid car, and I'm using it as a kind of template to build this frame jig. The idea being that I can then put different cars on their different bodies and be able to do repairs. So I want to make this jig as functional as possible. There's also the idea that I may be able to take individual pieces like frame rails and floor pans and transition pans and that sort of thing and put together my own floor pan out of those pieces. So hopefully I can work all that out. Now if you haven't seen the other four videos, what I have done is I've created a primary mount point on the spring shackle, the forward spring shackle. That is going to hold the most weight and is also uh, critical in that those are welded solid. They don't move. Forward of that, I moved up to the steering box and the idler arm and I made mounts for those using those bolt locations. So that is two mount points. The third mount point is the bumper bracket location. So I covered that in the last video. That is all working out pretty well. And I have some other things that I need to address, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. Next step is to create what I'll say is the fourth mount point. And that's gonna be all the way in the rear of the jig. And I've shown this before, I'm gonna show it again. Here's a picture of what I want to build. I'm gonna have this strut piece attached to the trailer and it's going to have a piece of all thread up here that I can move in and out of the original jig hole and then I will have this secondary piece that I'm going to build that will interlock onto that piece and that way I can use either one I could use the frame jig mount hole or I could use the shackle hole from the factory now if you don't already know if you haven't seen this I'm using a boat trailer as well this is a four winds boat trailer it is made out of square tubing and I feel like this is a pretty good foundation for building this jig. But I did find a problem. At least I think it could be a problem. So let me show you that first and then I will go on to what I'm doing in the back of the car. So let me start by saying that this is a solid 2x4 square tubing frame and I have placed jacks. I've welded jacks, two in the front and two in the back. Currently, all the weight of the trailer is on the jacks. Even though the car is attached, the weight of the car is on the lift. So what I was trying to consider is the idea of being able to lift this and move the, the trailer assembly around. And I wasn't really thinking about it very well. Um, what I wanted to do was kind of lift up here at the front and see what happens. And basically I forgot <laughs> that I have the weight of the trailer on the jacks and the car, of course, is sitting, you know, interacting with that. So if I try to lift this right now, I'm technically lifting the trailer at the rear mount points because I would be lifting those jacks off the floor and putting all the weight all the way at the back of the trailer. But let me show you if you can see what happens when I do this. Uh, this wheel is not on the floor, but if I try to lift this, there's some flex at the front of this trailer. So hopefully you can see this. I may have to reposition the camera, but I can, I can get a little bit of flex out of that part of the trailer. Let me show it from a different angle. So maybe you can see it here. Now the point is, I'm actually lifting everything at this, at this time. And I don't want to have that flex. So let me show you what my plan is to address that. Now, if you ever have seen a, um, a hangar for aircraft, a lot of them have no supports in the middle. And basically, it's a cantilever system. So they have the weight really at the back of the roof structure, and everything on top is just kind of suspended based on a cantilever type of design or you can consider a truss type of system. What I plan to do, you probably see here, I have a piece of one inch square tubing. I am going to weld this, I don't know if you can see it very well, I'm gonna weld this back 
Let me see, move the camera a little bit. So what I want to do is take the piece of one inch square tubing and I'm going to weld it to the, f the first dip uh, of the brace that's in the back, in the midsection there. Because there's three pieces. There's one all the way in the back. There's a second piece forward of that and then the third piece. And all that is ha has a dip in it because it's designed to carry a boat. However, I'm going to take the piece of one inch square tubing, weld it to that first piece as you look aft, and then it's going to get welded up here to the back side of this plate. And then this piece that I've added right here, I'm going to build probably a triangular uh, wedge and weld that piece also to this piece of one inch. The idea being that whenever I try to lift up here at the front, it's going to want to pull, let's say, I know it's kind of hard to describe this, but let's say this bolt is a piece of one inch square tubing, it's going to want to pull on that square tubing, which should eliminate the movement on the front section. Okay, so here we are at the back of the trailer. This is what I was talking about. This piece has this curve in it, right? And I'm planning to leave those. I have uh, already attached the uh, shackle mount points to the next one of these that's ahead, and it lines up really well. What I had to do uh, back here is I had to remove these plates that were welded on. As you can maybe see right here, these were the uh, strut pieces that held the boards that the boat would ride on. So in order to make this work, I had to remove those. And let me show you why I had to remove those. But let me tilt the camera up so you can see. I did remove what was left of the trunk drop off. It was damaged, rusted, and that gave a, more, a better visual on what we're doing here. So you, we've got the rear spring shackle mount, and then right here is the jig hole that I plan to use. So to make this, I guess, as simple as I can, I took a plumb bob and I held it on the side of the frame and lined it up with the hole for the jig. And that's going to give me a location for the center of the tubing that I'm going to put down below. So here's the plumb bob. And if I take a piece of two inch square tubing and bring it up from underneath, this almost lines up perfectly with the center of the square tubing. Now, there's a little bit of variance on this back bar. It is not perfectly square. It actually is leaning um, back a little, I believe. So when I put this on here, if I clamp it or go straight against the trailer piece, it's actually off a little bit. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, and I have to tilt it forward, but it also levels it out and makes it square at the same time. So that gives me my center point for the uh, square tubing, at least as far as fore and aft. Then I'll have to address it inboard and outboard uh, with the piece of square uh, all thread inside of the uh, square tubing that's going to be used as my standoff for the frame. Okay, so I have limited space. I'm just trying to give you as much of a view as I can. So if I use this all thread, three quarter inch all thread, that'll go right up in the jig location. There's a little bit of play there, but it goes up into the hole. At this point, I just have a nut on the all thread and a thick washer. And this will be sitting, basically, get welded to the top of the two inch square tubing. And then I can take the all thread and turn it up or down as needed to give me more clearance. So I can thread that into the tubing itself. Now, one concern I have, because I tend to overthink things, is the thickness of this washer. It's not very thick. So I think what I'll probably do is actually use the piece of scrap that I took off of this rear frame. That's quarter inch thick. I'll use that as a cap for the square tubing. So that'll be on top. I'll drill, I'll have a hole in there. But before I put the cap on, I will weld this nut to the bottom side. Of course, I have to make a hole for it, 
but I'll weld that to the bottom side and that way this is a flush surface on top I'm not dealing with the nut sticking on top uh, my distance from or this height is going to be roughly five and a half inches or so below the frame rail and so that'll give me some clearance if I need to I can get stuff out of the way so right now what I want to do is build this piece with the plate the three-quarter inch nut uh, it'll be pretty simple to build these pieces so I have the all thread in the in the jig hole and then the more complex thing will be adding the secondary piece that'll lock into this piece so let's start building something Okay, so I have the first vertical piece just clamped in place and it will have this piece of all thread in it. Uh, I decided to go with about 8 inches and that will allow for about 1 inch inside of the frame rail and then a couple inches down below uh, the nut. So that will be fine. And then this is just sitting up here. This is, will be a jam nut if needed. I don't know if I'll need that or not. But anyway, that's what that's for. So uh, when it's assembled, It'll look like this, of course, and this can be turned up and down as necessary. Um, I didn't really have any issues other than I ran out of argon when I was working on this, so I had to go get some and resupply. I will point out the price of that stuff is going up, just so you know. Anyway, so what I plan to do is weld on this piece once I get it square and level, and I will have this piece of all thread in the hole, obviously, and that will locate um, the exact, well, I say exact, it's not exact because the hole is actually a little bit oblong. It allows for some movement. Um, but I this will have to be leaned this way some because, again, that rear frame rail on the boat trailer is not square. So I'll have to move that up and get that welded in. It'll look a little more like that. Not much, but you can see the difference. So uh, I'll get that welded in and then we'll start working on the secondary piece that's going to go up to the shackle mount. Just to give you another angle on this, um, as I was saying about the angle of this post, this is how much room of movement I have within that slotted area. So the goal, of course, once I get this level and square, is to have this bolt kind of riding in the middle or the piece of all thread. And if I jam, take this jam nut and lock it down, that eliminates that movement of the bolt and tightens up the limits on the uh, post itself. So just in a little bit of movement here, my I probably can't see it, my bubble level levels out nice. So that'll be the goal. Put a little tension on that and tack it in down below. So okay, here's what I've done. I don't know if you can see this or not. I've used my digital level or digital indicator. I'm at 89.97 degrees. I think that's pretty close. Come over to this side. I know you can't read it, but I can. 89.7. So that's where I'm going to stick with what I have. Um, what I have also done is I took some foil tape and I wrapped around the top of the thread up here to help center it in the hole. So I'm pretty happy with all of that. And I think I'm ready to uh, put some welds on it.
Okay, so I want to show you what I did. Um, of course, I welded that in, and I got excited, and I got in a hurry, and I made all my welds before I double-checked this. And as it turns out, that was a bad idea. It was pulling, the welds were pulling it aft. So I cut the weld loose at the top of the rear and went halfway down on both sides and flexed this back forward and re-welded it together. So now this is aligned with the hole. So just note, take your time, don't get in a hurry because you're trying to make a video. <laughs> Now I just need to remove all that foil tape, and uh, basically this part of this side is done. All right, since I have all this in place, and as I mentioned, I want to make something that's going to locate that bushing uh, mount for the uh, shackle, I've come up with something that I think will work. So this is a piece of 1-inch square tubing welded to another piece of 1-inch square tubing. I've also added some weld to the edges of the corners. The reason for that, well I don't have any round tubing to use and I wanted to make something that would fit snugly in this hole. So I did that and then as I mentioned before I wanted some way to mount this. Initially I was thinking of going to this piece of square tubing and that would work but it would end up being go back in the hole there kind of, I don't know, kind of odd, let's say, because I would have to put some angle iron up here and then a piece down there, and I don't know if that's going to work exactly the way I want it to. So, the plan is at this point, what I will use is the bottom half, or the bottom section of the boat trailer. Now this does not line up perfect. It's got a slight angle to it, but it doesn't matter. It just needs to be located. So I will take a piece of this angle iron and weld it to the square tubing. And then I can put bolts into here. I could use self-tapping or something else, or I could use even some clamps. The idea is that I just want to be able to hold this in place. I don't need it to actually support anything because this should take care of that. But if, I, if it does come down to that, the weight or the location will be verified by this and where it sits on the frame here. Now, there may be some changes I make in the future, but I think this will work for what I want to do. And it doesn't really uh, hurt anything, you know. Uh, the idea being this is my main piece and this will be the backup. Also, what I want to do is take measurements from the top of this plate to the bottom of the frame rail and mark those somewhere on this so that that number is always consistent. So I know what that's supposed to be and if I have problems, you know, I can adjust to make it fit. So at this point, that's where I'm going to end this. Uh, all I'm going to do is weld this on here and again, either use clamps or some... Uh, self-tapping bolts that I can run into this rail and that'll locate this piece. So I still need to make one for the other side but that's where I'm at. So that'll be the end of this video. You know that last piece that I made it could evolve into something else. If I don't like it I can change it. That's the beauty of steel for one thing. You can modify things if you need to but also I'm all about trying to improve on different things even stuff that I've designed. So I'm pretty happy with what I've come up with, but who knows, I might change it in the future. Of course, there will be other things to do with this jig. Um, I plan to put the 67 on here when I do the fastback conversion, and hopefully everything works out with that, but it should tell me if there's problems with that car as well. Oh, there's one other thing that I need to do, and that is build the center section that I talked about previously, where I will have some sort of a mount point similar to the rear, that'll hold the floor supports. It'll locate them fore and aft. I don't know that that's that critical, but at least it'll give me another indicator that I can use. Um, it's been kind of rough this week. I've had uh, a back injury since Tuesday. I've been fighting with that, self-treating, self-medicating, trying to take care of those things. So it's been really difficult to 
bend over and do things and make stuff happen out here. Along with that, I have my tooth problem is continuing. So I'll probably end up going to the dentist Monday and may have to have another root canal and who knows what else, but fun, fun. It's always fun getting old. <laughs> but I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for your continued support. If you would, leave a comment, a thumbs up on this video. Help me continue to grow this channel. And until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya. At this point, I'm just using... <laughs>